Hang on. Hold on, counsel. I'm not going to worry about it at this point. I'm just trying to get through these. Come on. Your name? Pamela Peel. All right. Is Gerler here? She's on, on the phone. No, oh, she's on the... Um, I do not know how this got muted again, Your Honor. I believe I was on unmute. I have been you're, present. You're good right yes, now. Good. Okay. All right. Where are you folks in regard to this case? I, did you receive a copy of her answer? Yes, I did. I, I, yes, I received it on the 13th. Um, so I'm the owner of the home at 7751 Fishers Way, Dexter, Michigan, where the defendant is now occupying the first floor. I, I'm very nervous in this setting, so that's why I wrote everything. That's okay. Me too. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. I'm <laughs> seeking possession of my property, and I want the defendant to move out immediately. Um, we have no re we know we have no lease on September 23rd, 2021. The defendant and I made a month-to-month -month verbal rental agreement, and she agreed to pay $995 a month on the first day of each month following the first payment. On October 4th of this year, I gave the defendant the proper 30 day notice demanding possession of my property because of non payment of rent. Well, okay, let me stop you there. Okay. A 30 day can't be the subject of a non payment of rent action. Okay. So, all right. all right. Do you want her to move or are you just terminating her tenancy? I mean, are you terminating your tenancy and want her to move or do you want her to pay you? I want her to move and I want to also have a money judgment. So I can do that. Yes, you can do that. Okay. That's what I want. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, a, I'm seeking a money judgment from the court for all back. She owes me as of December 1st, 2023, which is $11,995 plus court costs. 215 and service fee of $68. So how much is it? So the total plan? money judgment requested from the court is $12,278. All right, Ms. Gerler, what do you have to say to that? Um, Your Honor, uh, when I first moved in, it was to be a temporary arrangement. I had another place lined up that uh, did not end up being represented appropriately. It was to be vacated and renovated, didn't happen. I have uh, attempted along the way to give Ms. Peel, the plaintiff, money. I became extremely ill with COVID, which I have long COVID along with two other disabilities. Uh, when I became behind in rent because of illness and sought help from local agencies. Uh, the plaintiff was offered money from Faith in Action and she declined those monies and there were other monies from other agencies that would have been available that would have satisfied my arrearages at that time of $2,985. Um, declining those monies uh, led me to believe that she simply wanted me to move out. So I tried to start packing possessions, became ill with COVID again. I have in the court documents outlined to you the many times since then that I have been afflicted with every COVID variant. I already have a serious extreme condition of electrohypersensitivity that I cannot easily find a place to live. I cannot live in group settings, be exposed to Wi-Fi, wireless meters, be near cell towers. I need a rural environment. 
For most of us, electro-hypersensitivity involves someone who enjoys a lot of shiny silver things and is very dramatic about it all. Kind of like Chuck. <laughs> He's adorable, but portrayed to have some mental health problems versus a an actual disorder. The World Health Organization has long recognized this as an actual disorder, even suggesting over 10 years ago that instead of referring to it as a disorder of electromagnetic hypersensitivity, the term idiopathic environmental intolerance with attribution to EMF should be used instead. So people take it more seriously. That didn't quite happen. A study was done in Austria in 2013 where patients reported sleep disturbance as their most common complaint, followed by headache, difficulty concentrating, and fatigue. Doctors believed about half the reported symptoms were actually plausible and could be attributed to electromagnetic fields. The problem is these symptoms can be attributed to so many different diseases, conditions, disorders, from neurological disorders to autoimmune diseases to environmental exposure, mold, Lyme disease, all these different things. So it's really hard to narrow down what exactly the cause of them is. The father of electrical engineering, Nikolai Tel Tesla, was probably the first well-documented but undiagnosed case of electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Some individuals are, in essence, allergic to 50 or 60 hertz of electromagnetic fields. These are people who immediately react when they are near transformers, fluorescent lights, microwave ovens, refrigerators, and other appliances. Often, these are multiple allergy patients. Multiple sensitivity begins when a person is exposed to a chemical agent such as a pesticide, drug, solvent, perfume, smoke, exhaust, or chemicals in food or in carpets. The agent, or its electromagnetic signature, triggers a reaction in one or more of the body's regulatory systems. As a result of the initial encounter, it can be fatigue, respiratory problems, or difficulty concentrating. After one is sensitized, future exposures to even minute amounts of these allergens can trigger an immediate reaction. The problem is compounded when the sensitized person is exposed to a second agent or to an electromagnetic field while reacting to the first allergen. In this way, people can develop allergies to hundreds of different substances and their electromagnetic signatures. Few physicians understand electromagnetic hypersensitivity and therefore treat the symptoms without recognizing the source of the problem. This was published in a, the Science, Science Digest. In 2020, an article published in the International Journal of Molecular Science detailed an association between electrohypersensitivity and multiple chemical sensitivity and stated that it should be classified as a neurological disorder. But at present, there's still much debate over whether it is actual disorder and if it is another illness or psychological condition that is triggered by the media such as this. I no longer have a vehicle. I cannot use cell phones, uh, smartphones, computers due to my uh, electro hypersensitivity. And I thank the court for granting this uh, Zoom appointment at the last minute since I was not supplied the forms necessary in the personal and mailing service I received and was actually waiting because in our December 1st hearing with Judge Barr, he informed the plaintiff that she had filed incorrect paperwork and needed to refile. So I have been waiting for that paperwork to come, which I don't know if something changed and was not necessary. But um, I What am incorrect now, paperwork? I don't have a notice to that. Well, and that's whatever happened, Your Honor. That's what I heard in court, and I'm not privy to what happened thereafter. I am chronically ill, Your Honor. Um, when okay. I get well, well ma'am, ma I, I, hold I cannot on. Yes, ma'am. I spoke with my attorney counsel yesterday, and she said my paperwork was fine. It was. I think it was just not clear to Judge Barr what I wanted because I didn't know how to present my case. So well, but, yeah, I actually see what Judge Barr is saying right now. Well, you filed two different notices. That's why I got it. It's yeah, it's fine. I think. Hold on. That's not that one. Right. You you filed two different ones. 
but you've got it appears to me the correct paperwork. Right. Uh, Your Honor, so, just to respond, that's that's what I heard from the judge, and my legal yeah, but counsel, this is another judge saying that that's wrong. It's correct, and that's fine. I have no problem, but okay, I was waiting good. on that paperwork. Um, I I I know that. The plaintiff is someone who tries to do things um, appropriately, but what did not happen appropriately with this home that has been a long time rental is that there is no certificate of compliance on file with the township. And they okay, advocated- so when are you going to move then? Uh, Your Honor, I have had to deal with all the demands of the court, so. I cannot explore that uh, yet because I was required to uh, apply for uh, SER with the DHS, which was declined. I have contacted every agency available to me thus far. Um, Ma'am, do you, do you it, understand she doesn't want you to pay rent and stay? She wants you to leave. I understand that, sir, but in to, to comply with the court and the paperwork required for this hearing, DHS, that's where I have put my first attentions. I have been packing and moving things out of the house, which they have witnessed, but because of my extreme sensitivities, it is not uh, easy for me to find a place where I can live safely. This little blip on the map in the hills of West Virginia is the Green Bank Observatory. It's actually in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and it is a national radio quiet zone where radio transmissions are actually restricted by law to facilitate scientific research and the gathering of military intelligence. The area is actually policed daily, and the general public is prohibited from having any kind of devices that are will admit excessive electromagnetic radiation, such as microwave ovens, Wi-Fi access points, and faulty electrical equipment. The FCC can impose a fine of $50 for each violation. Cellular phone usage in the central area of the zone is also restricted, although the restrictions are a little bit less on the outskirts of the area. However, this area attracts many people who have electromagnetic hypersensitivity because they believe it's a safe zone. I have just recovered from my last bout with COVID, which has severely impacted me for the last four years and created these issues. Um, And I have also- Ma'am, I I understand all of that. The question becomes, when can you move? That is a question mark to you and me both, Your Honor. I do not know. Um, I have nowhere to go. I am solo in this world. I have no vehicle. My car broke down uh, June of 2022. And my, my situation is not a good one because of chronic illness. My energy is not okay. reliable and sometimes 12 hours in the bed. Okay, ma'am, I can appreciate all of that. But I, you also have to understand that the landlord is entitled to her premises back. I understand that they request their premises back. And I have a have an appointment with Hawk on Monday. To what degree that will help, I do not know at this point. Um, I have been unable to find assistance from anybody because they say I am not sustainable because I am now forced to live only on my social security income. The okay. House line. Right. Uh, okay, ma'am. Here's what I'm going to do because this has got to. I understand the difficulties that you're telling. I also understand that the landlord needs to resolve that. So I'm going to set this for a trial. You raised some issues in uh, your answer, but I'm going to set it for a yes, ma'am. 
Um, when I talked to my attorney, um, she said that there is no requirement for um, the compliance uh, regulations in Webster Township where I live. And she's an attorney from Dexter. So. Oh, they know, more, was, they know more than sorry. us here as other country folk from Pittsfield or what? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. That's what she said. Is that correct? What? That's what she said. I don't know. I guess she's from Dexter, so she knows uh, more than us. We're just little country judges up here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, Ma'am. I actually called the zoning person too. She okay. Said, and she said, yeah, probably she, said, she agreed. Right. I, I'm having difficulty okay. hearing, Your Honor. Could that be repeated? No. <laughs> okay. Um, she went to Webster Township. The issue regarding this certificate of occupancy, it really isn't an issue because they don't require it for rental properties in Webster Township. That's a long um, I, I, would, I would like to know then why Legal Services of South Central Michigan gave me this form and okay, it out. I don't know. You guys keep talking about lawyers. I've not met them. I don't know. <laughs> all I know. All I know is this. You two are in front of me arguing a case. You have one position. Plaintiff has another position. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this matter for non-jury trial. It will be in person. Your Honor, that I, I, I hope you realize is not possible for me. I'm even being harmed waiting for two and a half hours on my cell phone, which is on speaker. Then, I can't, I can't. then I don't know how I'm going to get you into court. Uh, how is it, 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 it? Is it not possible for me to continue in this manner, sir? I have been before you uh, to establish the severity of my condition. I become debilitated, incapacitated, ill. I lived in the basement of my prior home for seven months because of radiation poisoning and by necessity where your court is located. There are many electronic communication uh, requirements for police, fire, the cell tower, Wi-Fi for the buildings. I will literally fry and be unable to move. That's why I couldn't come today. I, this is not a fun scenario. <laughs> and the, the landlords are well aware of my conditions. They had mitigated the house. They uh, use okay. Ethernet. All right, ma'am, ma'am. All right, look. Do you have any problem if I hold a trial and she appears by Zoom? Uh, I, I guess not. I, I, I've been with her without income for a long time, and I, my preference is okay. Look, folks. Yeah. I. There are a lot of folks out there that Everybody are having a, a hard time, story. and I get it. Yeah. Okay. I have to deal with it every Friday, so. I don't know that I can help you with any of that right now. Right. I'm just trying to set a trial date. Do sooner you have any better. objection to her? Tomorrow. What? Tomorrow. The sooner the better. I I'm not coming over. in on Saturday. <laughs> I, I'm just, it's not happening. How about Monday? <laughs> no. What? We can do when? What time? One o'clock on Wednesday? Oh no, I can't do one o'clock. What what time seriously can I do? Non-jury trial, December twentieth, two thousand twenty-three. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. Okay. And you need to appear in person, ma'am. You can appear via Zoom. And right here. <laughs> Absolutely, that's where I'll be. Okay. <laughs> and if I don't get this docket done, I'll be still sitting here from this one. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Your Honor, for the uh, for the accommodation for my disabilities. I appreciate your sensitivity to the matter and your humor. <laughs> thank you, ma'am.
Bless you. I will sign off now. All right. Peel versus Gerler. Ms. Gerler, are you there? I am unmuted, Your Honor. This is Ms. Gerler, and uh, my last three digits are 343. Three. Yes, ma'am. Are we on this is set for non-jury trial? This is a termination action. Um, Ms. Gerler, what's your defense to the termination? There's there's a month-to-month -month lease, correct? Uh, well, there was a change in agreement as well, Your Honor. And um, history and backstory, that is very much... Uh, applicable to this situation. I would like to first bring to your attention that I'm a lifelong long-term renter, uh, residentially, uh, longest term 13 years, 13 years and eight years. Um, commercially, I leased an upstairs office at Nichols Arcade from Wilson White Management at that time for 15 years. I have never had a problem paying my bills or um, until COVID and which I contracted in fall of 2019, which began a horrendous downhill slide of health, illness, income, and has basically rendered me indigent at age 68 I have tried to get help from agencies and I have not even heard back from Hawk as to after my appointment on Monday as to, you know, how things went. There are many issues beyond what is apparent on the ledger sheet. And when I initially uh, agreed to move into this home, I had another one lined up as indicated previously in our hearing. Uh, I requested to stay only three months. The plaintiff demanded six months because she needed me to watch her home while she and her husband, the landlord, went to Florida for a, a very long vacation, um, six, over six weeks, I believe it was, in 2020 beginning of 2022. Uh, problems arose. Hey, right Ma'am, ma yeah. ma can I just stop you one moment? Absolutely. All right. This is filed as a termination action. And fundamentally, the issue is going to be because of there is no lease is going to be why shouldn't you move? Um, Your Honor, I've been before you previously and I have three functional disabilities, electro hypersensitivity, which makes me uh, incompatible with any of the wireless utility meters, internet, Wi-Fi, cell towers, etc. This home has also been mitigated for me with the acknowledgement and cooperation of, of uh, the landlords who years prior to my tenancy had replaced the utility meters with opt-out meters when I made them aware of all the issues of electromagnetic frequencies they have Ethernet uh, installed, um, with, and we had things mitigated to reduce the, uh, the interference of electricity and wireless devices, including Stetzer filters in the plugs of uh, electrical plugs of the home, which was also by verbal agreement, my loan to them, uh, they're above floors for the use of the uh, landline digital cable phone and that which has been denied to me and does not allow me to send more information to the court. Um, my 
impression from the papers that I was given, and as I indicated in the prior hearing, uh, Judge Barr had said other ones needed to be entered that apparently were not needed. Uh, This is collection and termination. Uh, Had I had my phone line not turned off to me after I faxed in the confidential contact information requested by the court, I would have been able to send to you a letter from Ms. Peel uh, that she wrote to the Department of Health and Human Services when I applied uh, three years ago in 2020 stating that, you know, I was uh, in dire financial circumstances um, and having problems paying rent with the prior landlord. I did not know at that time I had long COVID. It was also the plaintiff who did the research and informed me uh, in late spring of 2022. But they have awareness of all my uh, frailties and vulnerabilities, which they have not been honoring in any degree, and knowing how very difficult it is for me to find a safe place to live, and I'm going to have to move rurally. There is no housing, affordable senior housing, et cetera, I can be in because of everybody else's need for wireless devices which are beyond hazardous to me. There's two types of people in this world. And it's not healthy and disabled. It's the strong people who push through and find a way to make it work no matter what. And it's the other people who have their hand out and expect someone to figure it out for them, to give them something, to do something for them, to fix their problem. And lots of times those are people who have some kind of disability because yeah, life sucks. Like, the hand you've been dealt really sucks. And yeah, it would be nice if there was some compensation for that and you got some kind of reward for, you know, living a really crappy life most days. But there isn't one. Nobody's going to give you anything extra. You don't get some kind of lottery winnings for, you know, having a miserable life. You just have to suck it up, make the best of it. But some people don't quite understand that. And they think that by explaining all these horrible things to people that they're going to automatically give them something extra. And they don't realize that They should be telling them what they've already done for themselves so that the people realize, oh, you're trying to help yourself. Okay, let me add on top of that. Not, well, you're just sitting there waiting for someone to help you and telling me why you can't, can't, can't. And then nothing's going to happen. I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder from a car accident where when I requested aspirin, they wouldn't give it to me, but narcotics and opiates that were not compatible with me and a closed head injury that was not diagnosed for a year and a half. So I have three strikes against me just as a person functioning in the world uh, with the long COVID, the electro hypersensitivity and the PTSD. Uh, I have been subject to some very harsh intrusive, invasive treatment as a tenant here for some time prior to these recent occurrences. And the assumption that one has of autonomy, privacy, and enjoyment of property when uh, renting a property have also been denied me. Okay, Ms. Gerler, Ms. Gerler yeah. I'm going to stop you for a moment, okay? Sure. Those aren't a basis for me not to grant a judgment to the plaintiff. Or at least possession. The issues that you're talking about may relate to their monetary claim. But as to the issue of possession, why shouldn't the landlord get their property back? Let me try to put it that way. To you. Your Honor, um, I was under the impression 
that Hawk and other agencies would be assisting me with the back rent so that I would have time to find a suitable place because I will literally be on the street with my possessions. I would say that would be uh, today's equivalent of delivering a head on a plate. I have nowhere to go. I have no vehicle. I live as a virtual shut right. with All right. I, I got, okay, I understand that. Your name, ma'am? Pamela Peel. Okay. Ms. Peel, you've heard all of the circumstances you're aware with this defendant. How much time would you give her to vacate the premises? Your Honor, I have asked her to pay up or move out since June of 2022. I am a very kind-hearted person. I was aware of the circumstances. However, this whole thing, I'm in my 70s. I depend on that, my rent for paying my bills. And I kept asking her, hoping, praying that she would leave. And she was unable to do so. And I can no longer carry her on my back. All right. Literally. It's I, 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 I hear you. And I understand because of the pretrials in this case, where this case was. Yep. So how much is owing? Um, the, uh, the amount of rent owing is $11,995. That's about. Okay. Right. Right. So the problem for bo both of you is even if, Ms. Gurler, and just listen to me, even if Hawk were to assist you, given what their maximum amounts that they would be able to assist, you'd still have to come up with $9,000. Okay? So there's part of the, that's the big issue. So when Your we Honor, get to pardon. that... Pardon? I, 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 I would just need to inquire about those figures because um, I, when I spoke with Autumn on Monday, she said the, that they had, uh, I believe, a maximum of $5,000 they can issue. She was going to reach out again to Faith in Action for me, um, whose monies Ms. Uh, Peel, the plaintiff, declined. In July of 2022, and at that time, other affiliated agencies would have brought me current uh, to, uh, there was $2,985 owing, but because the plaintiff refused the offers of money, that other monies were not forthcoming. And the plaintiff also knows I have been sequentially ill on a regular basis. There's there's no soundproofing between the downstairs, upstairs. They hear me hack, cough, sneeze. Ma'am. So ma ma I'm letting you Ms. know Gerler, it is illness, Ms. chronic illness. Yes. Miss Gertler. Whether the it's five thousand, three thousand, we can get into that argument. But you'd still have to come up with the other five, the other seven thousand if it's five thousand. I mean, the problem is that those other amounts are going to be your difficulty. Your Honor, I don't believe that I should be culpable and responsible for the monies they declined in July 2022. The two thousand nine hundred and eighty-five dollars, which would not the equivalent of three thousand dollars off the off of the total. Um, when I spoke to Autumn, she said that she would also pursue with faith in action. I was denied by Department of Health and Human Services for reasons I don't know because my mail is being held and I have not gotten that back to me. Um, when you're only making $1,100 a month on Social Security, 
I don't know why I was denied, Your Honor. I can no longer work. I was self-employed. I, I, I understand but, that, Ms. Gerler. Ms. Gerler, I understand all of that. But when we all boil it down, the reality is the funds aren't there. And so if the funds aren't there, what's really going to end up happening is you're going to have to move. It, as I see it, and I'm looking at the case, it isn't a matter of whether or not you will have to. It's a matter of when. And I would ask that the landlords, knowing my circumstances and situation, please grant some lenience in this case, as they may be leaving at the end of the month to go on a two-month Florida vacation. I have tried even to get people to help me pack, and people are not available due to our upcoming holiday. I am at this point. Okay, Miss Gerler, let me ask you, you this. I'm weak. Ms. Gerler, Ms. Gerler <laughs> in your mind, how much time do you need to move? To be very Not realistic. Not saying I'm going to give you that much time. How much time? When could you be out? To be realistic, sir requiring the assistance and the fact that I may move very far away. I, I would likely need till the end of January because I have quite a bit of things to take with me. Okay. So you need to the end of January. Yes. Ms. Fio, would you give her to the end of January to month? Oh, my husband for one minute. Um, <laughs> you look like the brain trust, but yeah, go ahead. You can talk. <laughs> would be willing to do January 15th. Okay. And so you won't do January 15th. not possible. I apologize hey, Girl, for interrupting. Ms. It's not possible. Ms. Girl? Yeah. Ms. Gerler, hold on. Anybody have anything else to say before I give you my ruling? It, Your Honor, I, if there was anything else beyond hold on, I did not hear it. This is no, um, I, I, okay. I was just asking if anybody else wanted to say anything else before I issue my ruling. Your Honor, I would like to say if it is possible, they hold $995 in as a security deposit. With, which they could keep uh, for the month of January if I were allowed to stay. And, um, of course, we'll continue to look for additional help but uh, to pay. But they know my circumstances. And yes, they do, Ms. Gerler. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I don't think that there's really much distinction between the 15th and the 31st. And given your circumstances, Ms. Gerler, I'm going to grant a judgment to the plaintiff for possession. The writ will not issue till January 31st, 2024. There Thank is an so issue much. regarding, you're welcome, but the, there is an issue regarding monies that would be owed. And so um a trial on any additional monies that will be owed will be set for march 5th 2024 at 9 a.m in person that will give time the reason i'm setting it out to that date that will give time by the time she vacates the premises to then you can do the inspection and you can have all of the damages that we can figure out and hopefully have it told all right any questions uh, from your honor I any the only only comment I have to say, and I'm very sorry, but I cannot appear in person. I can only appear via remote Zoom All right. due to my disability. I, un I understand that, ma'am. All right. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, um, you have struggled getting into public um, you know, for many months now. Since I asked her to leave, pay up or leave from the possession that I uh, filed a few months ago, October. Um, 
the tenant has not has not paid us any rent and she will not let us have access to our mechanical room, which unfortunately is we have to have access to the mechanical room through her apartment. And <clears throat> we give her notices and then we have people come and she will not, oftentimes won't answer the door or will just say, you know, whatever excuse. And then we have to, De continually deal with that. That's why I really didn't want to extend the time, but I understand your perspective. Um, it's been very difficult dealing with her. And um, not looking forward to this being completed. And um, I just want to, we do want access to our money. All right. Under paragraph 15, you fill out. Yes, Ms. Gerler. I would like to respond to that, please. Which um, part? Uh, the part about them wanting access to their mechanical room um, or access to the apartment. I have been subjected to an increasing amount of hostile, threatening, aggressive action, pounding okay, on Ms. the door. Ms. Gerler. I, I would allow them in to do whatever they need to do, but not by myself with someone else. I have not resisted them. I have been literally ill when they wanted okay, to come so in. Here's, Ms. Gerler, here's what I'm going to do. On the judgment form, when you fill that out at the town, under paragraph 10, the defendant is to allow plaintiff access to the mechanical room upon 48 hours notice. Ms. Gerler, that will give you time to get somebody there that's adequate notice that you, if you're going to have somebody else go in and look, you've got the time to do it. Your Honor, that is totally fair. And I, I thank you. I, that's what I do. I'm, I'm very impressed with you, Your Honor, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Ms. Gerler. I appreciate that. Will you put that in writing or do I need to? You need to write that under paragraph 10 on the judgment form when you pick one up up the front. Okay. And what exactly do I have to say again? <laughs> <laughs> Defendant, you know what? Go fill out the judgment form. I'll put it under paragraph okay. 10. <laughs> okay. I, I actually have it filled out, but this, anyway, um, it wasn't just for possession. This was. There's a money portion of it too. Pardon? It's you wanted possession and you had want a money judgment or so I can give you both of those. You can give me the judgment form, the money judgment piece. I've adjourned to March. Okay, so then I don't fill out the money piece. All the rest is is. Do you have the? I have a form. I didn't expect to. Uh, you know. Okay, put. <laughs> Put the names on there. I'll fill the rest out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gerler. And both of you have a very happy holiday.